There they come. Hi, everybody. How are you doing? I hope uh, you're getting to the ends of some of your classes and starting to wrap up final projects and stuff. I know that that's, uh, that can be a tough kind of time right now uh, as people are coming in. Um, welcome, welcome. Thanks. So many of you have been here each and every week, and I really appreciate that a lot. We've got actually some really good news for you, um, and uh, I'm excited to be able to get to share with you uh, at the end today of maybe some things that are going on. So hopefully we'll uh, get to spend a little bit of time together and talk about some good stuff coming up and uh, talk about some of the work that I get to see each day and each week, trying to ensure that we can all return to classrooms and make music together in whatever form that may be. So I'm going to go ahead and just jump into this right now. First of all, thanks a lot for coming to uh, another one of our Patterns for Success. Uh, my name is Bobby Lambert. I've realized the last couple of times I didn't even announce that for anything, but I you know, I'm really glad that you're here. We have a couple of the Wando drum majors that are here with us as well. I think one is still taking a uh, final, an AP exam, but Caroline, Audrey, and Gavin are with us today, and they're all uh, juniors right now, getting ready to be seniors, and they're in a lot of the same boat that you are in right now. I can only imagine that the online stuff has taken its toll and is getting a little old, so... I know that this especially means a lot that you're spending your time with us today. Thank you to Cecily up there for making all of this possible and to Music for All for giving us this avenue to talk. Um, one of the things that I'm going to ask here at the beginning, uh, and I'd like for you to maybe put it in the question and answer section, is um, what are some of the things that you've done during this, like some of the e-learning stuff that you hated the least? I don't know that anyone is ready for us to say, let's go all online next year. At least I'm not ready to say that at all. But I found like, for example, we've started a thing where we do these watch parties with Wando. And uh, last night we did uh, chamber groups and we tried to find as many good chamber groups and exciting groups as we can. I mean, we found an all girl bassoon ensemble for goodness sakes. I mean, let's be serious about that. Uh, and they were great. They, they were awesome. And we watched only about three to five minutes of each group. But it was great to see people excited and enjoying chamber music. One of my favorites was a clarinet, uh, accordion, violin trio playing the Sardis, which is just a, a showpiece in and of itself. So I think for us, that's one of the things I've actually enjoyed. We did DCI last Tuesday night. Uh, this coming week, we're going to be doing jazz, uh, jazz ensemble and performances that are there. So what are some of the things that maybe you've had your director or even any of your teachers say, um, what, what would be the right way to do this? Uh, in fact, actually, I think Cecily's going to turn on the chat feature for us so that we can just put that in there. That'll be good for us to see, like, when we maybe do things in the future that may be online, what would you, what, what was fun? What did you enjoy doing the most? And what was kind of the, the least painful for all of it? That being said, uh, we're going to actually do, we have a big announcement about our Patterns for Success next week. We're actually changing times uh, I haven't talked with my Wando friends about this, but they, I, I don't hold you all responsible for this one too. But we're actually going to move to Thursday evenings at 7 o'clock. There's a little bit of a reason for that that we'll tell you about at the end. But we're looking, we think that that'll maybe be a little bit better time to engage people, uh, especially some of our West Coast friends that have reached out to us a little bit. But also, um, just we have some things that we're going to be doing uh, that I think will be fun for you. Uh, in the next coming months. So I'm really excited to talk with you about that. But I did want to make sure I said that right off the bat, we'll be on Thursday at 7 Eastern next week. Okay, so make sure you look for us there. With this session, I wanted to go through like all of our six episodes combined and say like, what were some of the things that stuck out to me as like, okay, where do we go from here? Um, I, as I'm starting to engage our leadership team, there are certain things that I've never talked about before that I think are really important now. So just to kind of review, uh, we started with just the tryouts and like, how do we get ready for those things? And I think many of you have already gone through that tryout procedure. Uh, if you haven't, go back and check out that first video if you haven't seen that. Um, but then there are some things that I would go 
into this next thing. And the way I've kind of divided it up is I've said, here are some of the ideas and here's when I would do it. So you may want to write some of this down. I hate having to give notes, but I think that this, I think this would be useful for you. So I thought about if I was thinking about leadership and conducting kind of on this same path, because I think that there, you know, remember we talked about character, content, communication, the character and the communication are very much on the leadership path and the content is on the, on the conducting path. I sort of looked at the season. So we've got our preseason, early season, mid season, and late season. And if you think of it in those four quadrants, I think I can get very specific about what leadership techniques and what co conducting skills you want to have in your back pocket. Now, it may change from year to year given your band, but these are ones that I think kind of encapsulate all of it. So let me get started. Um, with the preseason stuff, I think that this is a lot of individual focus. And I think it happens whether you're a drum major or leader, three years or just one year. I think each year at the beginning, that's the time when you need to kind of reevaluate what worked well for you and what hasn't worked well. The first bullet point I would put underneath this preseason stuff, I would say individual focus, preseason. And I'm thinking like summer to band camp. Like the end of band camp is the preseason for me. And who knows what that'll be this year, but I would guarantee you're going to do some stuff online and maybe some stuff live before we start school. So for that individual focus, what can I do well? What do I, where do I need to grow? And what are my goals? Under that, I would put finding motivations. And so like, what is your band motivated by right now? The truth is probably not a lot. Uh, I think we're all in a place where, you know, not every kid is coming to any of the meetings and not every kid is doing the assignments and not every kid is participating to the degree that they can. But these are pretty strange times. And I think we have to focus on the ones who are and what they're doing and move forward from there. You can get so bogged down by the quitters, by the naysayers and all that. And at the end of it, that's kind of what they want. They want to feel better about themselves by bringing you down too. We have all decided, and I've said this several times, there are two types of groups that will come out of this, ones that are better and ones that are not. And do I think that we're going to be the strongest Wando ever by number, by what? No, but I do think we're going to be one of the strongest bands I've ever gotten to stand in front of because they've done everything they could to be there. And maybe the number isn't the same, but I can tell you the heart's going to be awfully good, and I'm really excited about that. What's your band's motivation? This is the tough challenge. Maybe your, maybe your band's motivation was winning a certain contest. Well, that contest may not happen this year. So what can replace that motivation? What are you going, and, and you know how you figure that out? You talk to people. I, there are several bands that I remember we're doing a, a, a program for a group in Illinois many years ago. And I said, what is your number one goal? Like 12 hands went up in the air to win state and all the hands went down because they all wanted just that. Um, from now being part of two bands that have won state a couple of times, if that doesn't happen, what are you going to put in those places? For some of you, it's family and that feeling of togetherness. If it's not that, it maybe needs to become that a little bit more because that's the only thing I think we can count on for next year. Okay. So what's the band's motivation? What's your class's motivation? Whatever class you're in, like sophomore, junior, senior, senior motivation can get really funky sometimes uh, because they have maybe a start to the year and then it starts to wane. Just a little bit. Have you ever seen that? Senioritis. Uh, yeah, we've all heard that. That doesn't exist, everybody. That's not a medical condition because if we had senioritis, I would have had it for the last 30 years. So, and trust me, I would be the first one to say that, but we get into a place where it's like, well, I'm just over it. I'm just over it. Hey, who's, who's really excited about, you know, quarantine, right? I, I've been over that for a month and nobody's cared. I haven't gotten to change anything. So this is a good lesson for us that we can be over stuff and still be excited about. And like sometimes one of our favorite quotes at Wando is fake it till you make it. Um, I do that often. If you ever see me in a faculty meeting, you're going to see me like, yes, this is interesting right now. Mm -hmm. I remember in the faculty meeting that I was at a little while ago, I had to go like nod every once in a while just to make them think that you're listening. Mm, yeah. 
See, I look really engaged, right? I'm not at all <laughs> with book return or whatever. I don't care. Um, Find your classes, and that's different than your band, okay? Because I think each year your class motivation can change a little bit. So talk with people. Talk with other members of your class and say, what, what do you want with band this year? What do you think we can do? And a lot of it will be, I don't know. But I think there's some things that you can control. And then the last one is yourself. Why do you want the band to be good this year? For me personally, I can tell you that being without it for so long has made me remember how much I really need it. Not just want it, need it. Um, I need that time. Uh, we got to, our seniors came by today. I was socially distanced and all that stuff. I, I wish I could say we were all masked, but not everybody was. But we were socially distanced. But I could tell that many of them hadn't spoken to each other in a while. And like all they were supposed to do is drop off their instrument, drop off their music, take some stuff with them. And I don't know that anyone did that. Everyone dropped off their stuff, did their stuff to do, and then they stood and talked 40 minutes at least. And it was so fun to get to see them do that. Um, I'm not telling you to all go out and hang out with your friends. That's not, oh gosh, the BOA guy said to go and it's a, no, not at all. But that togetherness and that time together um, it, it has really struck me over the last month about how much of that, I mean, I do miss making music. I'm not going to lie. I love, as I look at Audrey and Caroline and Gavin's muted right now, but as I look at their faces, I think of where Audrey sits in my band room. I can look over and she had a beautiful solo that she had to do from this. I, same with Caroline. I even think about when she played principal on the Persichetti and she played the solo beautifully. And I remember looking at her in the eye to do that. So we as directors are feeling that too. But what's your motivation? I think that's what you have to find each and every year. And this one's different, but they're all gonna be hard if I'm really honest with you. So that individual focus, number one, finding motivations. Number two, building relationships. And be careful, please do write that down because I'm gonna actually change those up just a little bit. So it's finding motivations, building relationships. That'll come back in just a little bit. So building relationships, I, I say this really uh, from a business standpoint, okay? Number one, creating allies. Now, what do I mean by that? Um, creating allies for me, when I became, so when I became the drum major at Western Carolina University, I had never marched in the band before. I transferred in from UNC Chapel Hill in the spring semester, and I just auditioned because I didn't want to go to the preseason camp. Uh, that's, there's a, a good story and a good reason why I didn't want to come to the preseason camp. But that was kind of my motivation for uh, applying for drum major. I even left. After we finished the drum major auditions, I left and went to dinner. <laughs> I remember Joanna uh, Abel running into the cafeteria going, Bobby, you got to get back to the band room. I was like, why? What's wrong? She was like, you're the drum major next year. <laughs> I was like, what? So I knew or the, one of the first things that I did was I went and met the lead snare, went and met the lead trumpet, went and met the lead flute, clarinet. So I went and met them and just said, oh, I understand that you're the saxophone section leader. Tell me about the band. What do I need to know about your section and what do I need to know about the band? And while that was kind of an awkward uh, way to jump into the drum major thing, it was a great way for me to jump into it because I walked into band camp at least knowing, okay, I know the saxophones feel this way. I know the drum line feels this way. I know like they knew that I cared enough to ask. So create allies and that needs to go with seniors and with section leaders. I'm not saying to go and kiss their tail, but I am saying to go and open a, a dialogue about, I want you to know that if you need anything, come to me. I, I want to help you. I serve you in this role come to me. Let me help you. Uh, building relationships, number two, defining non-allies. What a beautifully politically correct way for me to say that, right? Find non-allies. And here's what I mean. And just identifying. And I do think there are two classifications. Is there are some people that are just neutral. Like, they, you know, they're just there. I, I'm in band because I like music I'm, and I don't want to necessarily lead or anything. I just want to be in band. So, that could be your neutral factors that are there. They just are there and that's okay. Then you have the negatives. And I, I, I think that some of you are shocked to find that people don't like you. I think you need to go ahead and accept that 
and move on. Because if you try to please everybody, you end up hurting yourself, most of all. And you don't end up pleasing anyone. You have to do what your conscience and your brain tell you are the right things to do and the best things to do. And then deal with the consequences that they come. There can be some people who are jealous of your position, jealous of your talent, jealous of your opportunity. And all that you can do is your best for them. Try to serve them when you can help them. You know, the, the, whole, the whole adage of turn the other cheek is very real. And it's super hard, you guys. It's oh, so incredibly hard. Uh, I think you think it's easier as you get older to be an adult. It's, it's harder. I think it's harder then. Um, because we think we should know better, but we don't. Uh, young people are so much better at acceptance and understanding than I think many adults are. So when I have an adult who treats me pretty poorly, I'm like, wait, come on now. But I have to, even in my job now, define the neutrals and the negatives, not to do anything to them, but to kind of know when I hear a criticism from a certain parent or a certain person in the group or whatever, I kind of know, I don't know, I think that's an outlier. If you haven't read the Malcolm Gladwell book called Outliers, that would be a great read during this time because it talks economically socially about leadership and the idea of outliers that do great things and some outliers that don't do so great things. So building relationships, creating allies, defining the non-allies, those neutrals and negatives that are there. And the last part about that building relationships and maybe the most important is welcoming new members. Uh, I, I tell this story a lot. I remember my first day of band camp and I got to be there with Katie Anthony and uh, Katie Anthony is a grandmother in Minnesota now, uh, but she was such a dear person to me. My first day of band camp, I remember it clearly. You know, she introduced herself. She did all those right things. She was actually the trumpet section leader and I was on saxophone. But the biggest thing that she did for me that week was she saved me a seat at lunch. I cannot tell you how much that helped me and made me feel good by being able to sit there with a bunch of older kids. And I was only, a, I had just finished seventh grade. I wasn't even an eighth grader really yet. And that was one of the coolest things ever. I can almost remember clearly the faces of everybody that sat at that table. Oh man, it, it made me feel like I was welcome and that I had found a home. And I weathered a lot of storms just because of that lunch table for a few years. Don't underestimate just those small things that you might do. I know at band camp, we want to hang out with our friends. We don't, don't have a lot of time, but you as the section leader or drum major, your job isn't about you. Your job is about what the band needs and those new members need you. They may not act like they do. They may even think it's weird that you're talking to them, but believe me, they want you to. Every one of you, I hope, has a great story about an upperclassman, uh, an older person, coming to you those first few days of band camp and making you feel welcome. If you don't, then you by all means had better make sure that you do this well because your band's in need of it, okay? So we talked about preseason stuff, the individual focus on finding motivations and building relationships. It's kind of it's kind of one-on-one -on -one sort of stuff, okay? Now, once you get, oh, and I gotta do this too, the musical big ideas for that preseason stuff. And I'm gonna keep it really simple. You wanna make sure that you, are good with your tempos and the meter that's there if there's maybe a complicated meter that's there and then the percussion or rhythmic language all that I mean by that is that you start to get with the percussion as much as you can I know for me that was something I didn't quite understand as a drum major and my second year when I started spending more and more time with the battery that helped out a ton. So just at least making sure that you know well the front ensemble person and the battery person or whoever your head percussion kid is, make sure that you talk with them and see those places like, are you guys having trouble with anywhere? Is there anything I can do clearer? Like being able to make sure you can say, okay, I wanna conduct at 120. I can think of what that is and I can go. So having some of those fundamentals and foundational skills. If you'll notice, I didn't say a whole lot about clarity just yet. You can get that, it will come, but right now we just wanna make sure that the tempo and timing are exactly right. The other thing with music, you've got the tempo and timing, is just where's the melody? Uh, Maurice Burgess, 
and, and a few other staff members have done, uh, Ben Pouncey and Andrew Kraft, have done great presentations on score study at our, our summer camp. And man, they're just geniuses when it comes to, okay, here's how we're going to go about this score. We go through it about four times. And by the fourth time, you're going to know this really well. One of the first things they do is just taking a yellow highlighter and going through where they think the melody is. And sometimes you find out, oh, no, that was wrong. That's a counter melody. I got to go back and change it. And that's perfectly okay. It's your guess. It's your first look at something. I'm trying to find out. Have you ever, like, uh, watched a movie one time? And you're like, oh, okay, I know what this is about. And you watch it a second or a third time, and you're like, oh, my gosh, I missed half that stuff. That's kind of where we are. It's your first read through of the music. Timing and tempo. Where's the melody? If you know that going into band camp, you're in a pretty good place, okay? All right, now that's all the stuff with preseason. I wanna go into kind of this early season. Now this is the happy time. This is one of my happiest times in band all year. Everybody's still pretty excited. Uh, you know, like we haven't quite had our first game yet or maybe we, we have only done that. We haven't had a competition yet. Everybody's happy with the show. They think it's the best ever. Uh, it's such a magical time to be in band. That late August to early September time, you know, the, the, the weather's starting to change a little bit. Everything's great. I'm going to go back through those leadership things and the musical things and give you some thoughts about how do we continue that and getting ready for some of the darkest moments in marching band or in band that late season kind of, or, or mid season kind of stuff. So if you remember the first thing that we said was we talked about finding motivation. This one is going to be about, cultivating motivations. Now use that verb intentionally. This is the time where you want, like if people are getting excited about stuff, you want to keep that momentum going. Uh, sometimes they'll do like certain traditions and certain spirit things. You know, like many people at band camp will have different spirit days and that's awesome. But if you notice when we get into school, we sometimes sort of let that go. Maybe you say every performance, we're going to do this. Maybe, uh, bring candy for each other. My guys, the night before we, or the day before we have a contest, they bring flowers to each other, which were all still in your lockers that I just cleaned out, by the way. Thank you so much for that, guys. But they bring flowers, and, it, it, and they call it Fancy Friday. It's before every contest. They all dress up really nicely for our contest the next day, just kind of showing solidarity in that. Um, at Marion, we used to do things where they would do uh, surprises for the, the, like the section leaders would do surprises for their section and the sections would do surprises for their, their section leader. Whatever it is, now's the time to kind of start talking through that and then implement it there in that late August, early September kind of stuff, cultivating motivations. So one of the first things that you should be doing in that late August, early September time is understanding director and staff needs. Now. This is the band director saying this. So I've got a little bit of insight to it. And I can tell you the best drum majors that I've ever had have been the ones that could anticipate what I and the band need before I have to say it. And that's really powerful. Some people are great at that. Some people aren't so great at that. So here's what I would tell you to think about. To anticipate their, meet, their needs, pay attention during rehearsal and the organization. Like, I bet there's some things that the directors or staff are doing that maybe you can handle. Audrey was so great last year. She took over attendance, and I would have it quickly. If I, if I didn't, and I said, hey, Audrey, tell me about attendance, she'd say, well, this is, we're waiting on this. I'll get right back to you. She, had never, she hadn't forgotten about it. She, just, she did that without my having to ask her or remind her of that. The drum also have, like, we had to do dots, you know, give out the coordinate sheets. They always had, well, if they didn't always have them, they faked it well enough to where they could run inside and make more. Yeah, I see they're grinning right now. But the, like the point is, I didn't have to deal with it. Lost parts, lost coordinate sheets. They took care of all that because that's just a time waster for me. They could take care of those things. So be thinking about what you or maybe some of the other leaders can take over. Anticipate those rehearsal organizational things that maybe you could help with. And then maybe the rehearsal communication stuff. Uh, we have a system now, and I think Anna mentioned this before, where whoever's on the box will give instruction. And usually like the, if, if uh, there's staff members on the field, they'll talk unless it's like, hey, can I have everybody up here? And everybody stops and looks at me. And some, you know, we have a good way, but 
I'll say, okay, I want to take that back and go from letter A to B uh, just on air. And we, we actually just put air through the instruments. So they, they take it back and the drum major will actually be the one that says uh, beginning to A, or I'm sorry, letter A to letter B on air only set. And the kids have to respond to that beginning to or letter A to letter B on air only. And they, they, they do that. If they don't do that well, and we're going to waste that rep, she brings her hands down. This past year, it was Anna. She brings her hands down. She says it again. They go up again. How many times are you in rehearsal? And people don't listen to the instructions. And so you waste a rep because people don't know how far they're going. Um, it, it used to be a lot for us, and it's not at all. And we mentioned looking at some of the drum corps rehearsal videos, maybe just sending that to a director or to a staff member and say, hey, I'm wondering if maybe we, you would like to do this. We heard from the Wando director. We've heard from other people that this is working really well. Now, and they may not, and you say, okay, that's it. But there are times when maybe you can help out with that rehearsal communication effectiveness and make it go. I will tell you the one thing you can do, always set a great example up on the podium. If they're having to stand, you should stand. I had a drum major one time, the kids were standing and she sat down on the podium and I went over, I was like, are you okay? Yeah, I just got tired. We had a talk after that, like that can't happen. If you're ill, I get it and we got to take care of that. But if they're having to stand, you're having to stand. That sends a very bad message. So we talked about cultivating motivations. How about understanding section needs? Like, especially the percussion, especially the guard, and especially the new members. Like where, they, they've been in it for a few weeks now. Where is the communication dropping? Where is the sense of belonging? If that's not good, you need to make sure that it is. Um, our drum majors do a great job at the end of each week. They do a section of the week and a rookie of the week. And, oh, my gosh. It, and it's after rehearsal's done. I've often wondered, like, people should just walk away from that. But they don't. They don't ever. Like, with, when they, I'm listening, they're listening to me. They're like, oh, my gosh, come on, old man, let's go. Uh, but when they're talking, they're, like, in it to win it right there. They, they love that process. And if you want to ask the drum majors about what they do for that, they're on here right now. It's a great process that I do nothing about. And they take care of it beautifully. So understanding those section needs. It was You built a relationship with them before. Now you're kind of getting into the nitty-gritty a little bit. You're, you're really trying to get to know them. Taylor Watts talked to us about getting beyond the likes and dislikes and getting more into the substance of the person. That's where we are right now. This is a lot based on what he's teaching us in our conflict management. We want to get to those relationships so we don't have to worry about conflict, okay? So the musical ideas right here are talking about show arrival points. Where are those big moments in the show that are awesome? Like where are those places where you're like, if you've ever conducted before, aren't there those moments on the podium where you're like, wow, <laughs> oh my gosh, this is incredible. And I don't want them to end. I even remember those when I was there or being in front of a great band. Um, this past year, our concert band got to play at the Midwest Clinic and it was probably the best concert I've ever conducted. Just getting to sit in front of them and they just nailed so much of it. We finished our, which went over really very well. It's called Come Sunday by Omar Thomas. If you haven't heard that yet, we did the second movement and they just flat out played. I remember turning around and I mean, people were going nuts and people were standing up and I, I bowed and I stayed down there a little bit longer than I would normally do because I just wanted to remember that time of being in front of that band. Bob Buckner, my college band director said right before my last year, I was his drum major for three years. Right before my last first football game, he came to me and said, I'm going to tell you something that my, my high school band director told me, and I've never forgotten it. He said, hit record. And what he meant by that was these times, this time of leadership and this time of music making, come around again. And so just hit record and try and take in as much of that as you can to get you through some rough times. That Midwest concert has been one of the things that's helped me get through this quarantine uh, really well. The, the loss of my mom in January, like that Midwest concert, it, like I draw from that still. It's a deep well. 
So I tell you the same thing as you get to come back and get to know people and get to make music, make sure you hit record. And the places you want to record the most are those big arrival points. Where are those places where like it, it's so much coming from here and not just here anymore? Know those places in the show so that you can direct and lead the band to them. The other thing I would tell you is like musical needs. Are there some things that in like during the performance, there needs to be just a little bit extra. I can remember the trumpets had an entrance to something in my show when I was a college uh, drum major. And I had to look at Ryan right in the eye. And every time I did, we nailed it. And all the trumpets did. If I missed, they missed. So what are those places now that you're finding where the, the band tends to slow down here? The band tends to speed up there. And I'll tell you, that will change. You know, you'll think that they've got it one way and then it's like a wild horse. One week you, you're riding it just fine and the next. Every rhythm of the score. You know, some really intense conductors love to have all the kids or all of the, all of the parts sing. That, like, I'm saying that very incorrectly. So if I were conducting the band, I would need to be able to sight sing every part. Uh, and it's the right tones, but the right rhythms, you need to be able to do that so that if you have to go in and work with any section, you can sing their part rhythmically accurately. That's a big deal. That's a huge deal. If you can't, and they can, their level of trust just went down quite a bit. And I think at the end of the day, you're gonna all these things that we're talking about, I'm gonna say this at the end, is about building trust, both as a person and as a musician. So, and then the last part is understanding the percussion parts and how they fit. Every time you can go, if the percussion are playing through the show, go with them. Uh, our four drum majors will tell you that almost every time we have at least one major with them, oftentimes head drum major that will go work with percussion because we want those two, that lead snare, that drum major connection to be really, really strong. So understand that. Uh, I said, so the musical needs things that are kind of wonky during performance, understanding each rhythm of the score and understanding how the percussion parts go. So that for me is where we get through the early season. Some of the happiest times. Well, if we have the happiest times there, some of the darkest times are here in this mid-season. It's that mid-September through October time when everybody hates band and we're tired of practicing and we're never gonna get this. And oh my gosh, if I hear one more time, one more time, I'm gonna shoot myself. Like we get really intense about that. And what happens, it's my crying baby theory. Um, let me share the crying baby theory with you. Um, have you ever been in a church or a concert or any quiet place and there's one baby who starts to cry? What do the other babies start to do? They start to lose their minds. We were at the baptism of my youngest daughter and we were having this moment. She was, I mean, she's like 10 months old. No, she was younger than that. She was six months old. She's looking up at me you know, just sparkly eyes, starting to smile a little bit. And I, I'm like, here's my second daughter. And this is it. We were surrounded by family. This is so awesome. Oh, my gosh. And one kid in the back, like something happened, and he starts crying, just wailing. And I saw her face go from, <laughs> I was like, no, Olivia, come on. And I could almost see her little brain going, uh, you know what? I'm not terribly comfortable myself. Now that you mention it, I'm not very happy. One of the things that I do with students is that, you know, I've been out, you know, it's like, okay, we're all going to stand at attention and stand still. And then one kid goes. And now every single one of you are like, oh my gosh, why did you do that? Now I have to itch too. It's the same thing. It's the crying baby theory. And the crying baby theory is that when one person goes to a darker place, it drags a few other people with them. They want to, 
If I feel bad, I feel better when other people feel badly with me. And there's something about empathizing and sympathizing, different topic. But this is that time of year where maybe the competitions haven't gone as well as you wanted. The show isn't as good as you thought. Uh, you aren't playing as well as you should. Uh, practice has gone by the wayside because classes are just too hard. We have tons of excuses. But I would tell you that it's in those times, those six weeks, mid-September to October, where great bands are forged. I, I believe that beyond a shadow of a doubt. Um, Marian Catholic rehearsed like fiends during that time. They knew that that time was going to be the hardest, so they pushed the hardest then. Wando is now at a place where I think that they, they know that time can be hard, and so they work even harder during that time, and it makes it a lot better. So during that time, how do we get to that place? You know, we talked about motivations, cultivating motivations. Now we're going to create motivations. You're going to have to go way outside the box. And hopefully by now you've gotten some ideas of like, what can I do for the band to get them to get excited about what we're doing? And maybe it's something silly. You know, there have been fundraisers where it's like, if you do this, we can do this to the band director or stuff like that. There was talk of trying to duct tape me to a wall at one point. I'm not giving any of you ideas here, so you all just kind of mute out for a little bit. Uh, but I have, you know, one of the things that I've done is, uh, as, as a director in the mid-season, I've gone and worked with a group, and we had this certain goal of finishing part of this drill. And if they did, we had this water balloon fight where the directors didn't have any water balloons, and we got pummeled. Oh, it was awful. Uh, but the kids enjoyed it. We had a good time. We laughed a lot. So what are you going to do in October to help us laugh? Because, boy, we sure need it. We've at least gone through some things now. And, and no, getting together to watch Tiger King is probably not the mid-season motivation that we want to go for right there. We want to do something that involves all of us. We do a trunk or treat on Halloween that I think these guys could attest. That it's a blast. We bring everybody uh, to, after we get done with rehearsal, we have our parking lot full of cars with so much candy, it's illegal. It should be illegal with how much candy is out there. We've now, this year, we had people decorate. We had a pirate ship. Like, do you, did you guys see that this past year? I don't really even understand how they did that. But it had like a mast and a sail. There was a plank that you had to walk. Like I sword fought uh, Audrey Marks on that at one point. Like we, we just had a blast that night and in, in October, we really needed that. Maybe you need to have something a little bit earlier, but um, just whatever you can do to raise the spirits, you've got to create the motivations there. Getting through the mid-season blues, helping to enjoy the process and listen carefully to this one, helping to enjoy the process and the failures. I've had those bands before where the show took longer to develop than I had hoped. And they, the kids thought it was bad before they were done with it. And so they kind of, they, they didn't want to, they didn't want to go the full, the extra mile. Uh, had that in 2015 at Wanda. We'd had a failure at one point. We didn't do as well the contest as we had thought. And man, I knew that we were at a crossroads. They could, the kids could have said, you know what? This guy is an idiot. We're not going to follow him. Or they could really kick it in gear and do well. And it was at that point, actually, it was um, October 20s or so that that had happened. And we still had to get to our state contest, which was in early November. And what was so cool about that is we started talking about, instead of the contest defining the success of the year, maybe we got to define the success of the year. And we started talking about what would be successful. What would we think? What do we want to feel when we go to state? What do we want to express? What do we want to... And there were a lot of great things that came out of that. The best thing that came out was we learned that we didn't really work as hard as we thought we could until then. We had been at about 80% effort, which was still good. I mean, the kids can play, but it was 80%. And when we went against some people that were quite good, we struggled. Then when we came to state, it, they did a great job with it. It was wonderful. I remember when we finished our finals performance, I was ready to get on the bus and go home. I didn't need to hear who had won what, and I didn't really care. Those kids found a new level of commitment and performance that was wonderful. 
And we did that because we found that it wasn't the contest that defined us. It was us that defined us. I'll be perfectly honest with you, and I think these guys will agree with me. We didn't remember that lesson as well this past year. Uh, we kind of got caught up in the stuff rather than our process and what we were doing. And so it can happen. I mean, I, I'm guilty of it myself. But at the end of the day, and again, going through this process of quarantine, I'm like, I don't care if we go to a contest. I, I just want to be able to play. I want to be able to play with the kids and be able to perform something. Uh, I mean, I'd sort of like it to be more than, hey, baby. But if that's all I get, then that's all I get. I mean, it's pretty fun. I won't lie. But that's what it is. So we have to create those motivations in October so that when we fail, not if, but when we have failures, bad rehearsals, bad contests, whatever, we can do that together. Helping to enjoy the process, I said that. So big musical ideas, this is where some advanced conducting starts to come in. Where are some places where you need to do the passive cues, which is just ex extending the pattern, making it bigger or smaller? Where do you do some of the independence of hands? Where do you do some of the cues that are really dynamic in what they show? They are a visual representation of the music. That's where you wanna make sure those things are in place. Tempo should be rock solid. Uh, I should be able, I, I joke about this with my kids all the time and I don't do it. It maybe sounds a little creepy if you don't know me. I'm like, I should call you at 3 a.m. and say, hey, do 160. And you should just be able to go tick, tick, tick. And okay, good night. It should be so ingrained in you. And I have to tell you, in the past two years with our drum majors, they've gotten so good at that because we'll do things where it's like, hey, um, we're going to go up four clicks, but don't tell anybody. And they have to, like, that's a hard, <laughs> as a conductor, that's hard. Um, they live with that metronome, either on their neck or on their phone or wherever, and we want that to be absolutely solid. So just getting that advanced conducting, I, I, know, the, I know the tempos, I know the stuff, and I'm starting to get even more uh, engaged with showing the dynamics, showing the entrances, showing the releases, any of that kind of stuff. And we've talked before about independence of hands, and we'll actually talk to you about how you can learn more of those a little bit later. We're essentially trying to bring the music to life right now. It's this time of season where the show either takes off and starts running on its own momentum, or, you know, it's kind of like flying a kite. You know, you get the right momentum and the right wind beneath it, it'll just take off on its own. Whereas if you don't, it just keeps hitting itself on the ground. Uh, we don't want to do that. We want to try and get enough wind and momentum underneath it. And that takes people knowing their part, you knowing the score, and trying to make the music come to life. So that takes us up through October. For many of you, that's where your season may end. Some people will go on into November. And this, this doesn't, so this pertains to that. But it also pertains to everybody, no matter when your season ends. I call it the future group focus. We had in the early season the individual. In the mid-season, we had the small group. In the late season, we had the full group that we were working with and thinking about and trying to engage. Well, the, the post-season or the late season is the future group that you're trying to work for and work with. So here's what I talk about. This is the advanced leadership stuff. This is where you are finding your successor. I have three great drum majors right there. They better, by gosh, find somebody as good, if not better than them, to take their place next year. Now, they're not going to decide that, but they're going to start looking for two or three kids that they talk to in August about trying out for drum major next year. Right? Yes? Okay, good. Good. Because I think sometimes, um, and I'm happy about it. We have a lot of kids at Wando that love to march and love to perform in that way. And they know that drum major job is hard. It's hard. I'm not going to lie. But the amount of experience and the things that these folks can do is just incredible. I'm so amazed by what they bring to the table. And so you, as the upcoming seniors, you need to find your successors for next year so that the future of your band is in good hands and you had a direct impact on that. Yes, you were a member of the band for four years, but if you help select those successors and encourage good, strong people, not just your friends, good, strong musicians 
to be the next leader, you ensure that band's success. We well, don't ensure, well, yeah, you sort of do. You at least make the conditions very favorable for success when you have great people coming through. And that's hard for people to look for if you haven't done it before. So what do you look for? The folks you don't have to tell twice. The folks that are on time. The folks that uh, come prepared. The folks that play their instrument well. You start to find that in a person, you need them on your leadership team tomorrow. Like talk to them in August and September about, man, you do such a good job. Have you thought about auditioning for drum major? And they're going to say, no, I haven't at all. Okay, that's fine. Start now. Get some questions and come to me. And maybe even look for opportunities where you can engage some of them. Not just one or two, but like find people that, hey, I, I, Mr. Lambert has me doing this. You want to come with me? Um, now, don't pull them out of rehearsal or anything silly like that, but you know what I mean? Like looking for opportunities to include people that may be good future drum majors. Um, one of my associate directors and I were talking today about some really great upcoming sophomores and juniors uh, that, are, that could be terrific drum majors in the next couple of years. And we were like, okay, we need to plant the seeds now so that that can happen. So you need to start finding your successors. Uh, you can you can do it, yes, of course, then, but it starts as early as now, going back and doing that. How are you going to leave your mark? How will they remember you? What will you do that will make it so that people will say, let me tell you about my section leader. Let me tell you about my drum major. If it's just, well, they were never mean to me, that's not a mark. It's not. Is it a thing of like you, you, you influence them, their musicality? Is it that you influence with your kindness? Is it, you know, with your attention to detail? What is that thing that you are going to do to help leave? And if you start thinking about that now, you can. How do you figure that out? Well, who's left a mark on you? What have been some of the best leaders and worst leaders that you've had? What's the mark that you have still from them? How are you going to leave your mark? And with the conducting, I say that there should be a true understanding of musical expression and communication. You want to see what that is? Go find Koji Mori and the Spartacus show. Um, you know, he was on our show a little while ago. And every time I think about the quintessential communication of a character, that's him. Because if you watched that show, you saw that Koji is about as calm and collected as they can possibly come. But go watch that video. And when he sticks that spear into Will Pitts' side, I, I was even like, wait, because he doesn't look like he hesitates. He jabs that into him, and it looks incredible. And he just seems like the most confident, maybe even arrogant person you could possibly imagine, and he's not at all. He plays that character. Are you a true expression of the music and the feeling of your show? And then translate that into your instrument and your voice. And what I mean by your voice is, will you stand up for the right things? Will you um, speak up when you feel like you need to? Will you take the leadership that you learned in that marching season and apply it to your concert sectionals? Will you apply it to your jazz band? Will you apply it to AP Calculus? Like, and I'm not telling you you need to tell people what to do, but you do need to make sure that you're holding yourself to a standard at all times. And that's at the end of the day when we do that, when we hold ourselves to a standard and we try to do our best. We may fail. Remember I told you everybody fails? And, and at Wando, one of my favorite lessons is failure is necessary. Failure is temporary. And if you understand those two parts of failure, it doesn't, it doesn't just absolutely destroy you to fail. It's going to happen. If you're not failing every once in a while, then you're not trying the right stuff. It's too easy. You need to go on. You need to move on to something else. When you think about a toddler and how much they fall, how much they, they can't do, and you want to see true failure, try and find a toddler use a spoon for the first time. It, it's a disaster. And do they, are they like, oh, I'm emotionally hurt because the spoon is, no, they're laughing about it. They're like, oh, cool. I can throw it and that's really funny. Oh, awesome. I'll do that a bunch of times. Failure is necessary and it's also temporary. 
we will all fail. If we didn't, then we weren't pushing. We weren't going to our limits. If we do those things, if we have those standards and understand that about failure, we start to build relationships and trust. I talked to my uh, high school best friend a couple of days ago, and I found out that in, I, I've been graduated. I'll, I'll just be like, I think I'm uh, at 23 years, 24 years, somewhere around like that. And I found out that there are four members of my class. We were a class of 82 and there are four members of my class that have passed away two in the last month, nothing COVID. Uh, but as I, as I kind of think through that a little bit, uh, we, we also on Facebook have our high school with throwback memories. And several of my classmates have posted pictures like me in uh, ninth grade going on the trip is painful. Me in the 11th grade as the band president. Uh, I was a student class president in, the, in my senior year. And there's a picture of me and the rest of the cabinet. Yeah, it's, it's kind of hard to imagine that. But I have to tell, as I look back at those people, we've reconnected in that time. And my band friends are absolutely, there's a, there's a different kind of bond that's there, I have to tell you. Um, so my mom passed away at the end of January. And I, I, I know I look like I'm an old guy, but man, it still hurts real bad, real bad. And uh, at her funeral, I would say that there were probably 15 to 20 of my high school bandmates that came to that. Uh, at, at her funeral, my, one of my fellow drum majors from college flew in to come. Um, you can't underestimate the bond that you build with that. And I think that it was built because we, we had a relationship built on trust and love of music. And so as you're, planning through this, let me give you some really practical things to do. Reach out to your section. Have a Zoom party with them. Say, we're going to watch, like if you're the Mellophone section and you haven't watched Santa Clara Vanguard in 2018, shame on you. Shame on you. You should go back and watch that. We watched that the other night. My Mellophones were like probably saying more things than they should have. Uh, we had a blast. It was so much fun. It, if you're a percussionist and you haven't watched indoor uh, indoor percussion, like if you haven't watched uh, River City, uh, or uh, sorry, Riverside Community College, RCC, if you haven't watched some of those groups, uh, the one from Nashville, uh, forgive me, I can't remember. If you haven't watched those, come on. It's incredible. Like just get together with your section and let's watch some of these things. Find four videos and just, just have fun. Enjoy. Reach out to your band directors as well and ask, how can I help? Because we're at a place right now where we're feeling a little bit underwater. Uh, there are states that are trying to come out with, we should cancel band, choir, and orchestra for this entire year. And I, I, you know, I will never do anything to put a kid in danger, but I also want to know why you're saying that. And I'm finding that there's less science to it than convenience. And I don't, I don't want anybody to make that decision but me. If it's a thing where we find out we could really hurt the kids doing this, well, then it's not a decision. It's just as a fact. But I'm not seeing something that tells me that. This is a hard time for all of us. You've got to find ways to build trust and build relationships. Reach out to your section. Reach out to your directors. Find out what they need. With that being said, here's some, a couple of things that you can take with you for that. I am really, really excited. This hasn't come out majorly public yet. But uh, Music for All is going to have a version of their summer symposium done virtually this year. So this summer, starting as early, Cecily, you may have to correct me if I'm wrong, starting as early as June, June 1st? There we go. All right. Starting as early as June 1st, some of the summer symposium will be online and able to access. Uh, now, think, that's a lot of different things that are there. You've got the concert side the uh, orchestra, you've got the jazz band, you've got um, the electronic music, you've got marching band, drum major, color guard. I mean, you've got several different arms of that. And all of us have committed to doing some form of that online this summer. Here's the really exciting thing that I'm, I, I, I can't wait to tell you. You know what the cost is? Nothing. Won't cost you anything. Uh, 
and I, I have to tell you, I was, I even kind of struggled with that for just a few minutes. I was like, wait, we want to make sure music for all it. Like, honestly, I'm, I'm an independently wealthy teacher. I mean, goodness, I, what, who needs money? But like music for all this, this organization, like they're not, they don't pay me anything to say this, but the, like, this is the company that if it goes down, we're all in trouble. Like our band network just went, went away. So I want to make sure that they're, I, I really, I even texted the guy earlier, Cecily can tell you, I was like, are you sure you want me to say this today? And he said, yeah, it's okay. We're good. Okay. But what's cool about that is uh, you can take any of them that you want. Now, some, some of us are going to look at maybe doing a day, a couple of days in between a day, like doing different things like that. Um, I'm actually meeting with all the DMI staff tomorrow night at seven o'clock. We have a zoom meeting set. And we're, we're discussing what we want to do. I don't want to tell you too much, but I can tell you that we actually have some people that are coming back to us that haven't been with us. Uh, Chris Cates, uh, for those of you who have been with us a few times, he's coming back. Stephanie Grody is coming back from Texas uh, so because they can teach virtually. But we're working on ways that we can do everybody together and then go into Zoom rooms, much like you would have gone into your squads, now, I should also tell you, our swags are pretty interested in coming back and helping us and doing that. Even some old swags who haven't been around for a while, uh, they're willing to come back and help us with that group so we can take as many folks as we want. And what I would tell you to do is maybe, I mentioned talk, finding your successor, maybe invite that successor to come to DMI with you. Uh, and all they have to do is log on. It's fine. It's going to be easy. Uh, and people say, well, you, you're going to record it, right? Yeah, but a recording isn't the same. It's not like us being able to talk and especially those Zoom rooms that we're going to have. So what we'll do is we'll say like, okay, Scott Oliver is going to be on and he's going to talk to you about some of those communication skills and teaching marching. Now go into your squads and go through that for about 20 minutes. And while you may, and you may want to go outside and like literally try and teach each other. Heck, you guys are way smarter about this stuff than we are. So we're so excited to get to offer that and to get to be a part of that this next year. I am, I am just thrilled. Uh, we don't know exactly how it's going to go. We just know that on June 1st, we know that some of the things are going to roll out that day. Um, no charge. Other the parts of the campus are going to be doing that as well. So let's say that you're doing the DMI track, but you also have an interest in maybe composition. Uh, Richard Salcedo is going to be doing some things about composing. You can scoot over there whenever he does his session and go watch that. Uh, there are things that Carolina Crown's going to do with our marching band folks. They'll be playing some stuff. And maybe you want to go to, let's say you're a trumpet player and you're thinking about trying out for Crown. When they do their sectional, you may want to scoot over to there. They probably will not overlap. They're going to do theirs a little more spread out. Uh, but all of that is open and free to you. So start thinking about, for me, I'm going to tell Wando, all of you better have your butts in the seat because this is great information for all of us. Um, you would be silly not to take it. You're really making a decision of saying, I don't care that we have band next year. I don't care that it's any good to not take advantage of that free. And when, when you ask music for all, why are, why are you doing this? And their whole point is everybody has been hit by this pandemic everybody's in a bad place with it. And we wanted to make sure that people know that this is truly music for all. Um, there are folks that, you know, if you said we're going to charge 20 bucks, they may not be able to do that. And boy, those are some of the folks that need it the worst. And I, I may be growing up. I don't know that I could have done. I don't know that I would have had access to it. So the fact that, that people are doing this, I mean, it's right there for the taking. And it's going to be life-changing, like they say. It, is it going to be the same as us being side-by-side -side in that theater doing the arrow ceremony? No, not quite, but it's going to be the arrow ceremony. And we'll figure out, we'll talk to you a little bit more about that uh, as we go through. For those of you who know what that is, that'll be good. I'm so excited that you've kind of continued this journey with us. Our Wando drum majors, thank you. You, you know how I feel about you, and, and just in front of all these people, thank you for all that you've done. And Cecily, thank you for being here with us each week. Again, next week we're on Thursday, 7 p.m. Eastern, so think about where that is for you, and just kind of translate it. We kind of feel like it'll be a little bit easier when it's in the evening, uh, and we actually, 
uh, now that I've told you, we're going to have different people from the summer symposium camp that'll come in and talk to you a little bit about what they're going to do as part of their camps while we're also telling you about what DMI is. Because again, you can go to as many of them as you want. You like jazz, go to jazz. You want some of the concert stuff, go to concert. We're really excited about this and, and so glad that can be a part of offering it. We'll tell you this, all of the teachers said, we're, we're good, we'll do it for free. We'll do it to, for that. And boy, at this time where people, <laughs> aren't ready to give stuff away all the time. Uh, that said a lot to me. Our, the DMI staff, I sent out a text, and within two minutes, I had heard back from all uh, 14 people that I sent out to. I'm on board. Let's do it. There are a lot of people that care an awful lot about you, even if we can't see you. Your fellow band members, and that's a, that's a tie that runs pretty deep. So we're with you. We want to do all we can with you. I hope you get excited about that. Share that with your friends. Start figuring out like who who do we want to come with this, or maybe you, you know, maybe we'll be at a time where you can actually be at the same house and do this, or maybe even at a band room together and going through it. So thankful for all of you. Um, uh, thank you to Music for All for letting me do this, and I hope to see you next Thursday at seven o'clock. See you, everybody. <laughs>